Hey guys, welcome back to Home Build. And first thing this week, we're gonna finish buttoning up the fuel pump on the 911. Okay, so those of you watching last week will have seen that uh, I got my fuel, fuel pump and fuel filter all mounted up and I got a couple of AM fittings on the hard lines up in here, but I need to actually make my AN lines to from my tank to my pump and also the return line back to the tank. So let's start making up some uh, AN lines. All right, so the first lines I've got to make up are just the low pressure lines. So this, uh, this particular line is the line coming from the fuel tank into the fuel filter and then it goes through the fuel pump. Um, I have to use for that, because of the way the barbs come out of the tank itself, they're just a smooth straight barb. So to make that line, I've just got some of the Raceworks uh, AN6 push lock hose and I'm just using a, uh, this is a 120 degree uh, push lock fitting. To install this is really easy. I've watched some videos, but uh, this is the first time I'm trying it. Um, basically, all I need to do is I've got my um, soft jaws. So I've clamped in the fitting. You need to dip the end of the hose in some hot water to soften it up. Um, they suggest not using any lubricant because it can potentially come off of the barbs because basically this just pushes on and then you're never getting it off. Um, no hose clamps or anything necessary. This is just how it is. Uh, for best results for the hot water, uh, I recommend using a uh, home-built mug. Definitely uh, the best way to go and <laughs> we'll just soften it up here and then hopefully it should just push on the end of the fitting. That's it, nice and simple, easy, done. So that's one, and the other one I'm gonna do is, so that's the feed line, the return line, I'm using AN5 line, same thing, uh, just with a 90 degree fitting, so I'll do the same thing again, and we'll get these two ready to go, and then I can actually measure them up and get them set up on the car. So nothing is easy and I've been trying to get the, um, the fuel line onto this barb coming off the tank here and there's just no room to get my hands in here to be able to actually get the barb on because it's such a tight fit in the first place. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to go bring the car down, uh, undo the fuel tank and get the fuel tank loose so that I can move the fuel tank back and uh, connect the barb up and then I can put it all back together again. It's so much harder than the easy way. So as you saw, after a lot of messing around, actually physically pulling the tank out of the car, I came to realize that the, uh, the dash six line is not gonna fit. I was going backwards and forwards with Jamie from Raceworks over what uh, stuff to use. The issue that we have is that the um, AN stuff is, is basically sort of based on imperial sizes. These sizes on the tank are metric, so we're trying to get the best thing to match up with what is currently there. Um, from the fittings all the way, the rest of the way works great. It's just where I have to connect up to what the original stuff is because the lines out of the tank are actually 12 mil feed line and an eight mil re return line. Now we managed to get the dash five works quite well with the uh, eight mil return line uh, going onto the tank, but uh, the feed line, yeah, we were actually, um, Talking backwards and forwards, we've worked out we're gonna go up to a dash eight fitting and uh, that should go on there quite well with a uh, hose clamp. Um, we'll see, hopefully it's, um, it's, it's a nice tight enough fitting and uh, we can move forward. But um, it's a bit of trial and error here, so um, all right, let's go back over and start working back on the engine. Okay, so it's time to come back over and start playing with the engine again. And um, before I can finally set it up for EFI, I need to install a couple more sensors. And that's where I need to start putting on 
some knock sensors. Now, I've done a bit of research seeing where other people have installed them. There are a bunch of different locations. What I think I'm gonna try and do, uh, a lot of people use uh, the later 964 engines came out with a uh, with a bridge. So basically it was uh, a spot where you could bolt the, uh, the knock sensor uh, onto this sort of bracket that joined up all three of the uh, cylinder heads on either side. I am not going to go to that extent. I'm just going to uh, drill and tap into the uh, the center cylinder head on either side and uh, and just bolt these straight on there. Uh, joining them together would definitely be a better option, but uh, for me, this is easy access. I can do this here, so that's what I'm going to do. So the current issue I'm having is that uh, I don't actually have a drill that's small enough to fit in here to uh, actually drill out this part of the head. But I do have a die grinder that I should be able to fit a seven mil drill bit in that can drill this hole out. Then I can then tap out with the eight mil tap. But um, I'm just gonna have to modify the drill bit first and basically cut off the, uh, the end of this old drill bit and see if I can get it to fit into this. So then it'll fit in here and it's a whole process. Okay, so it hasn't been the most successful day. Basically, trying to modify the drill bits to fit into the die grinder didn't work. They, they're not centered enough. The die grinder is not um, accurate enough, so it's just, it's just, it's not, it's not good enough. Um, I dropped everything and raced down to Benny's Custom Works and borrowed uh, his angle drill. And this is gonna be too big to fit in there as well. Um, it's just, even, even, even if I could like modify a drill bit down small enough, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be a very good straight run to get the, uh, um, the knock sensor in there. There's just no easy way to be able to get a, uh, a drill in here. I know they are available. I will actually go onto Supercheap's website and order a, uh, an angle air drill. It's one of these things that I needed to get for ages, but um, it's, uh, I'm gonna bite the bullet and go and do it. It just, when it comes up, you need it right now. And after a little bit more research, I found that the best place I'm gonna mount it is actually uh, one of the old throttle mounting plates. And because I am going individual throttle bodies, I'm not gonna use the factory throttle anymore. So there's a bolt hole going begging and that's the one I'm gonna use. So um, that is a nice, simple problem fixed. It's, um, and it still gives me access to put the, uh, the plug on from the back here, at least while the, uh, the cover is on, I can access the plug. So. Um, I'm just going to get some uh, wiring sort of sorted up for that now and um, we at least have one knock sensor and it's just, I'm just going to leave it as one, that should, uh, that should suffice. I've got Another thing that was brought up in the comments last week was that the oxygen sensor bungs uh, I put on last week need to be at at least a 10 degree angle so that the, any condensation can drain from them, otherwise they just won't last very long. Um, I checked the other side is, is good. This side is definitely too level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and cut it off and see if I can just tilt it just a little bit and, uh, and re-weld it on and sort that out. So um, thank you for uh, pointing that out. I am a complete noob with all this stuff. So um, let's uh, go through and repair that right now. All right, the bung is uh, realigned. I've got a nice little uh, slope on it now, so that will uh, do the job nicely. Next thing I'm going to tackle, I actually still couldn't find my uh, engine crossbar, so I bought one. Unfortunately, uh, the guy who sold it to me didn't mention that it was actually had been previously damaged and repaired and it's currently cracked again, which is frustrating, because that would have been nice to know. So now I'm gonna have to go through, it's uh, slightly crooked, and it's got a crack in the, uh, in the bottom of it, so I'm gonna have to try and straighten it out and uh, repair it so I can put it back on the car. Okay, engine brace is repaired, so that can get painted up and remounted onto the engine. But moving forward, I can finally install the wires onto the back of the alternator and then put this, uh, the orange uh, engine cover on getting close to the fun bit. I'm looking forward to the fun bit.
and now it's time for the fun bit. I've been looking forward to this, the nice, new, shiny uh, RHD ITBs that I'm fitting now, the individual throttle bodies for those who don't know the lingo. These are a beautiful billet piece of gear and they actually have individually adjustable butterflies on each one. So you can set them up and as opposed to some of the ITBs which have a single shaft going through and they're all running on the one thing, these can all be individually adjusted so you can get the perfect idle uh, over every cylinder. It's uh, These things are a work of art. They're a beautiful piece of gear. I'll put a link in the description to the RHD website. These things are so pretty. I've been looking forward to putting these on for so long. Yeah. Okay, so initially I installed these around the wrong way. Um, Rama RHD labelled them one, two, and three, and but uh, I had it in the um, the cylinder order, so. Unbolted them around, flipped them around, so now they all uh, operate together. You can see that the butterflies all open and close together. Looks good. Unfortunately, I dropped this thing at some stage. I don't even remember doing it, and uh, and I've cracked that there, but uh, um, it's going to have a bolt and a washer on it, so that will hide it, but it's uh, annoying. But now I have the, uh, the ITBs uh, installed. Now I have to set up the linkage. Oh, they're so pretty, I like it. Uh, I finally managed to get the, uh, after a little bit of playing around, sort of working out how things are supposed to go, I've got the uh, linkage all set up now. Um, now, I'm not setting up the throttle just yet, the, uh, the the rest of it. I've got to put another linkage onto this shaft to actually set up the throttle itself, but that's uh, still to come. For now, uh, it's time to start looking at fitting some injectors and fuel rails. All right, time to fit some injectors and Raceworks have come to the party again. They've sorted me out with some uh, 347cc injectors. These are the same, they're a common Bosch uh, style injector. Uh, these are the ones used on V6 Commodores, supercharged V6 Commodores, I believe. So very common part. I think they're good for 350, 400 horsepower. This engine is not going to make that, so I've got plenty of room to go. Uh, so now it's time, I'm just going to use a little bit of WD-40 to uh, uh, lube up the seals and fit them in and fit the, um, the fuel rails in. Alright, so we have injectors and fuel rails, they're all mounted up, they're working good. Now I'm just putting this fitting on the back of uh, one of the lines of the throttle bodies. And it actually, uh, this RHD throttle body setup actually uh, uses just a standard BMW E36 throttle position sensor. So it's nice and easy, uh, easy to get part. So now I just need to fit that up and uh, we will basically be uh, done as far as I can go on this engine, for the time being anyway. Oh, these look nice. This is so nice and shiny. I've been looking forward to putting this stuff together for a while, and it's great to see it on the engine. Lots of wiring to do. Uh, as of pretty much next week, I think I'm going to be having to start getting into doing some wiring looms. But um, as you might have noticed, shirt change, etc., that this has been filmed over two days, and Raceworks is so prompt that I actually have the uh, the replacement hose that I only mentioned yesterday. It's already here. So um, let's finally just quickly go back over to the 911 and see if we can button up that fuel system. Finally. All right, well, while the spare tire's out, I've been meaning to do this for ages. Some of you picked it up 
a couple of years ago when I restored the car that I had didn't touch this. I'm just gonna give it a very quick scuff now and just uh, hit it with a rattle can back to silver again, just to uh, knock all the rust off. There's only just very, very light surface rust on here and just make it look a little bit prettier again. So what you saw at the start of the video was me using the push lock hose and obviously that didn't fit. The new hose that they sent me out is their 120 series, which has a, um, uh, it's, so it's a rubber inside with a, um, with a braided out, outside edge. So, and this fits perfectly over the end. It's a dash eight. So putting the fittings on this hose, slightly different. Every hose seems to be just uh, a little bit different depending on what it's made up of. Uh, this particular one, I've taped up where I want to uh, put the fitting. I'm just going to cut the uh, the end of it off. Or the other end I can uh, make to length later. Using the hose cutters, I cut straight through the tape so I get a nice clean cut. I'm trying to keep it square. There we go. Nice square, straight cut. With my fitting, I take the uh, the end off and I take the end and just put that into the jaws. Take my tape off of the end of the hose and then try and insert it into the end of the hose. So I push the end of the hose in until it is uh, just level with the start of the threads on the inside, and I put a piece of tape around the base to make sure it doesn't move. When I start installing it, I've got my fitting now, it's in the, uh, in the jaws, so now I just need to slide this on and tighten it up. And there we go, one end on. So now we need to go and refit this up to the car and then work out how long I need it and connect it up to the tank. And hopefully, finally, we will have fuel lines, or one of them. It's taken much longer than I expected. And one more different type of hose again. This is uh, for the fuel pump to the fuel line, the hard line. This has got a Teflon lining in it. So you've got to put the, the base of the fitting on first. It has this little olive here, and this olive needs to actually go over the Teflon, but between the braid and the Teflon. Once the olive's in the end with the, uh, the Teflon in there, it's just a matter of putting the fitting in the vise press it in, screw it up, she's done. Nice and easy. And there we have it, we actually have our fuel pump all plumbed in. So um, the fuel goes from here, through that uh, line through into the uh, fuel filter, through the fuel filter, fuel pump, into the uh, that AN line here, which goes through into this fitting up here, through to the back of the car, and then the return comes in there, goes up over the top of the steering rack and comes back down in here into the uh, fuel tank. So we are, Done, except for wiring, which I'll do later. This was, well, this was an interesting one. Uh, I went from having a horrible day yesterday, trying to get everything, just nothing seemed to work, couldn't get anything working, to um, a quite successful day today. And I have nice, shiny, shiny new ITBs. I'm, oh, I'm, love, I'm in love with these things. They look so nice. The action is so smooth and oh, they're, gonna, they're gonna be good. All right, well, that is all for today. Uh, remember, if you need any uh, Porsche parts, head down to porschepartsbyjeff.com. You can compare prices with uh, all the big sites all over the internet. Also, if you want to help out the channel, head down to the link in the description, go to Patreon, watch these videos a day before everybody else. 
You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, all at Home Built by Jeff. All right, guys, see you next time.